I think it's helpful to think about whiteness and blackness as poles of a spectrum. Over the course of our history, whiteness is um, the pole of privilege, so high income, education. Blackness, on the other hand, is associated with stigma. It's uh, you know, marginalized, disadvantaged, um, the opposite, so less income, poverty, welfare receipt, um, incarceration, for example. Um, and so these are the things that we associate with the different groups, and it makes it even more interesting then to see if we assume that race is not fixed, if someone can be classified in one group or the other or somewhere in between across the course of their lives, it actually tells us something about the relationship between race and inequality. In order to demonstrate that race is not fixed, I actually had to use the data that was currently available because if nobody believes that race is flexible, no one wants to collect data. And so there's a bit of a catch-22. You have to convince people that race is flexible using data that typically doesn't think that this is the case. I rely pretty heavily on the National Longitudinal Survey of Youth, um, and in particular the 1979 cohort. So these are um, American men and women who were ages 14 to 22 at the time that they were first interviewed. Um, and then the interviews follow them across their life. We know what their income is and what their education is in terms of how many years of school they've completed and what degrees they've acquired. And all of these are what we would consider measures of socioeconomic status. They're also asked to classify the respondent by race using the categories white, black, and other. We hypothesize that um, if people were aware of racial disparities in these factors or had stereotypes about who was more likely to go to prison or who was more likely to receive welfare or who was more likely to lose their job, that those assumptions might also then affect how they classified the respondents when they were asked to assign them a race. For example, with unemployment, it was measured in terms of whether or not the respondent had been out of work for at least four months in the year prior to the survey. And what we see is that um, if the interviewer heard that the respondent had been out of work, this did appear to affect their classification. So for example, person 343 is seen as black 33% of the time prior to experiencing unemployment and 100% of the time after they experienced unemployment. So it's not just that race is changing over time, but that it's changing in ways that is, are clearly related to these changes in social status. So that once you experience unemployment, it pulls you away from whiteness and pushes you towards blackness in terms of the way that other people perceive you. Over the course of the whole span, so the 19 years of the survey, 20% of the respondents experienced at least one change in how they're classified by the interviewer by race. The relationship between race and inequality is not just about when people change race, but also about when their race stays stable from one year to the next. Another racial stereotype in the United States is related to contact with the criminal justice system. And this new survey had a measure of whether or not the respondents had been arrested since the previous wave of the survey. So for example, if someone had been previously classified as black by the interviewer and had reported an arrest since the previous survey wave, they were more likely to be classified as black by the interviewer again in the subsequent year. At the same time, if someone had not been classified as black in the previous survey year and they didn't experienced an arrest in between the two surveys, they were more likely to be classified as black by the interviewer in the subsequent year. So people stay black when they've experienced contact with the criminal justice system, and they switch to black when they've experienced contact with the criminal justice system, so the association between blackness and crime is maintained. In order to confirm the results from the surveys, my colleague and I teamed up with some social psychologists to run an experiment. The experiment asked people to classify the faces that they see as either white or black. We varied the faces as a spectrum from the most stereotypically white face to the most stereotypically black face. We also dressed these faces either in a suit or in a kind of t-shirt and coveralls to emphasize high status and low status. And it uses a novel kind of software that tracks mouse movements. So we were both interested in what category they chose when they saw these faces, but also interested in the actual trajectory that the mouse took as they moved either up and to the left or up and to the right. So you could use the XY coordinates of the mouse to, in a sense, see them thinking about the categorization process. The video depicts the average mouse trajectories 
of classifications for the exact same face, when the subjects saw the man in the suit, they were more likely to go directly toward the corner of the screen that corresponded to the white category. In contrast, when they saw the same face wearing the t-shirt and coveralls, the mouse trajectory veered ever so slightly towards the black category, even when they ultimately selected the white category. They're taking into account not only the physical information about the person's face, but also the status information that was implied by their clothing. So the stereotype of a higher status person wearing a business suit as somehow being more white is visible in these mouse trajectories. When we study inequality, we often think about race as something that's an input into the system. So you're born white, you're born black, you're born Asian, and that that affects the kinds of opportunities and outcomes that you can expect in your life. That's certainly true, and we have lots of research to demonstrate that. But we also need to think about race as an output from these systems, so that once you've experienced upward mobility or downward mobility, that then reflects back on how people perceive you by race. It isn't stable over time. We can't simply talk about gaps in wages between whites and blacks, or gaps in test scores between whites and blacks, as if those are two separate mutually exclusive groups of people. Mm -hmm.